I have already done this rant about HPs once, but this is kind of to show that it isn't really an HP problem. Um, in this case, we're looking at a Dell. Uh, but it's not a Dell problem either, although some of the stuff we're going to look at today is a Dell problem, um, but not everything. Um, what I'm specifically getting at is the power supply. That's not a Dell problem, it's not an HP problem, it's a small form factor problem. This case is a non-standard case, it's a little thing that uh, is supposed to look prettier under your desk or on your desk or something like that, take up less space, be easier to move, and that kind of thing. Um, there are a lot of disadvantages to it that the people trying to sell these things will never tell you though. Um, this standard case takes a standard power supply, standard motherboard, standard everything. So I thought, well, this power supply, which is blown because the cooling fan seized up and overheated the power supply and popped it, um, is going to cost, if I wanted to replace it, about $180 by the time I got shipping on it. Uh, that's why the customer ended up giving me this machine, because it was just sort of a, it's not worth fixing. It's a Pentium 3 1 gigahertz. Why would I spend 200 or close to $200 plus labor uh, to fix this thing when I can go out and buy a good used Pentium 4 something for about the same price and have a whole lot faster machine? Um, I completely agreed with him, but I thought, well, I don't like throwing this junk into landfills because there's a lot of toxins in this stuff, and there's no reason why this motherboard should go out because it works perfectly fine. So let's put this motherboard into that case, and we'll have a perfectly functional Pentium 3 1 gigahertz file server, web server, whatever. Um, then I got looking in here. This, on any normal computer, is a screw hole. Um, in this case, it's a little weird springy mounting bracket thing. Uh, looks kind of like that, or that. Oh, there's another one up here that you might not be able to see too well because of the dark, crappy lighting down here. Um, if you happen to have access to all Dell parts, this kind of idea makes things real easy because the whole thing just pops out but that should be the back of the motherboard that you're looking at instead of this steel plate. Um, so, there's that problem. Try and get it back in here. And then there's the other problem that I got found when I started looking. This little ribbon cable is the front panel connector. Um, completely non-standard again, and it runs up here to all the electronics and junk that are the, uh, the front power LED and hard drive light and the power switch and all of that stuff. Um, tiny little connectors, you can't use anything normal on them, because this is a normal connector, um, which won't even go in there. It's just too big, uh, if I can keep my shadow out of the way. Um, so Dell figured they had a better way to do things and screwed it all up for me. Um, if you look at this one, these are the standard connectors for just about everything on the front panel. Um, you take this wire, you plug it on there, boom, connection is made. That's how easy it is. Um, every standard case ever has that kind of a connector on the front um, to just plug everything in. They figured they had a better way. So, okay, so I can't take this motherboard and put it in that case. Okay, so can I take a power supply and put it in this case? Well, I'm not going to buy a $170 power supply for a Pentium 3 1 gigahertz for the exact same reason that the customer didn't want to. So I thought, okay, I've got this other Dell over here, uh, which is a Pentium 2 400 that another customer gave me to recycle at some point recently. Um, and I thought I'd strip the parts like the CD drive and things like that out of it. Uh, memory's already gone out of it, as you can see. Um, but Dell power supply, Dell computer, should work fine, right? It's even the right width. It's a little high because as you can see the other one is this high this one is this high but I thought well with a little bit of hacking and screwing around um, I should be able to get that to work uh, interesting little tidbit completely aside here though this Pentium 2 400 had from the factory max output power 152 watt power supply this thing in the Pentium 3 which is probably about three times as fast a machine um, was only 145 watts so, two years and two or three times the processing power newer, and they'd actually dropped the power supply output by seven watts. A little weird, but anyway. Um, so I thought, okay, this should fit. And then I got looking at the wiring. Standard 20-pin ATX power connector, standard wiring. 
red, red, missing, black, 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 green. That would be plus five volt times two, a bunch of grounds, and a power good, or power on line. This thing, same 20 pin ATX power connector, orange, gray, red, red, red. Doesn't look at all the same. We've got red, red, nothing, black, 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 orange, gray, red, red, red. No, red, gray, red, red, red. So we're gonna be connecting these reds onto this motherboard where the blacks should be. Plus five volt directly to ground. That's not gonna work too well. And the other side of the connector over here is the same way. And you'll find if you connect this Dell power supply to this Dell motherboard using this standard ATX connector that everybody else can agree how to use, you're gonna do one of three things. You're gonna blow the power supply, you're gonna blow the motherboard, or you're gonna blow both. Simply because Dell decided that they would take a standard and bastardize it uh, and make it something else that only they could use. So, I can't put that power supply in here. That power supply is basically junk for anything because that's such weird wiring. Um, I may be able to pull the wires out and rewire them to make it actually work like it should, but I'm not holding my breath and it's not really worth it for a power supply like that. Um, so my alternative is to take a standard ATX power supply, which looks like a monster in this thing, um, and somehow try and get it to fit. Um, I can, but the problem is I wanted this thing to actually be something that I could close up. And I mean, you can see here that the power supply overlaps the motherboard rather significantly. Um, so there's no way I'm going to actually be able to rig this thing up and get it to run with the case closed. Uh, it's going to have to have the case open or the power supply is going to have to sit like this or something like that. Um, again, just because Dell thought they had a better way to do things. Now, this is not a Dell problem, as I've said. This is a small form factor problem. If you get suckered into one of these machines, you are going to run across this problem because this power supply is only available from Dell at three times the expense that it should be. 145 watt power supply for 160, 170, 180 dollars, somewhere in there. A 450 watt power supply for that case would run me about 80. That's the price difference that we're talking about here. Twice the price for a third of the power output just because it says Dell on the logo and just because it's one of these small form factor jobs. This motherboard only available from Dell because it's a completely non-standard motherboard with these weird non-standard mountings and things like that and because of the tray underneath you can't put a regular motherboard in this case at all. So if this motherboard blows after your warranty is expired, a year and a half in or something like that, you're looking at a new motherboard from Dell, again, at two to three times the price that a motherboard would be from anywhere else, um, and you're going to end up with the exact same computer, a Pentium 3, 1 gigahertz. If that motherboard were to blow, the power supply in this thing, when I got my hands on it, was, I think, a 350 watt. So that Celeron 300A and motherboard could be swapped out for a Pentium 4 2.6 gigahertz or something like that with a gig of RAM. So not only have I fixed my old computer to get it working again, I've also significantly upgraded it. And there's no technical reason why you cannot do that in a standard case with a standard motherboard and standard components. This thing, you spend twice as much or actually just about the same because in this case you'd be only replacing the motherboard in that case you'd be replacing the motherboard the CPU and the memory it would cost you about the same price but in this case from the Dell you would still have a Pentium 3 1 point or Pentium 3 1 gigahertz in that case you'd have got about 10 times the extra computing power by repairing your old machine for the same price as this thing um, as I said, it's a small form factor problem because in order to get these tiny little cases, parts have to be made proprietary. It doesn't matter what manufacturer you go with, Dell, HP, Compaq, Acer, they're all the same. Um, so what I'm going to have to do to get this thing to work, as I said, is mangle that power supply into it somehow. Um, and I really don't want to throw this thing out because, as I said, it, the motherboard and everything works fine. It's just the power supply is shot. Um, 
and I'm not spending 200 bucks on replacing a power supply for the same reason that the customer didn't want to, because it's a Pentium 3 and I could buy something new for that money. Um, but considering I have all these older parts sitting around doing nothing, I figured I might as well put them to use. So, when I get this power supply mounted in here, um, I'm assuming it's going to look one of two things, either incredibly monstrous or incredibly cool, um, at which point I'll probably do another video. But until then, I'm going to sign off.